volunteer for for additional information, to volunteer or for additional information, contact Deacon Smith or Sister Karen Smith or one of the ministry leaders. And our registration for that is ongoing. Don't forget to invite saved and unsaved family members and friends to our Sunday morning and Wednesday night worship services. It's still not too late to be all in for the Building Fund Drive campaign and the completion of our second floor education and recreation building behind those beautiful walls. Oh, yeah. You may give in your first item below under all in or building fund. Everyone is asked to continue supporting our ministry, our media ministry. For those who desire to be on our sick and or shut in list, contact the church office or see an usher to get a prayer request form. Don't forget to include, include in your prayers our members, relatives, friends, those of bereavement, our servicemen and women, and our leaders in our churches and our country. So the upcoming events for December. For all of the members who are currently in good standing, we are asking that you mark your calendars for the annual church conference, which is December 18th at 10 a.m. Um, the definition of a good standing, if you need clarity on that, see an office staff member to obtain a copy of the church bylaws. To all Sunday school teachers, staff, students, on Sunday school December 19th at 845, there will be a Sunday school holiday fellowship. Please prepare for one Oh, we 
Sanctify us in name. Saturate us in name because God, we need you. There's nobody, there's no other hope that we have but in your name. So we worship you, Jesus. Your worship, you're worthy of our worship. Many people argue that we should just worship God or worship you. I remember that the day you were born, me and came from the east to worship you. So Father, let them not cry, holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty. And they worship Jesus. But Father, your son be what is great. He said, worship the Lord thy God. And so Father, we thank you that you are one. And so Father, in worshiping him, we are worshiping you. For God, you are our strong power. You are our Jehovah Nisi. You are our Jehovah Jireh. And we bless you. We glorify you. It is in Jesus that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you're my strength. And you are my redeemer. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and we believe. All of God's people said amen. Amen to all the very part in the room. Make some noise with all the very people. Make some noise. to me on the 19th. I believe on the 17th, amen, which is a Friday, amen. I want you to see right your hand, Minister Charlie. When you see Minister Charlie, we have a great event planned for you all in Fairview Heights, amen. amen. It's going to be on the 17th, Friday evening, I believe. It's going to be fun, food, amen, and fellowship, amen. And we want you to come out. Please see him or his lovely wife after church, amen, if you want to be a part of that. Amen. Will we give God another hand clap of praise, everybody? <laughs> I'm going to do something that I haven't done in four years of being here. I'm going to preach something that I didn't plan to preach. Amen. Amen. I, I hear the Lord say something different this morning. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 20. Amen. Let's look at two, three verses in our hearing. Amen. And then we will get a gain of thought. Then we will gain a thought. And we will hear what thus say of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We give God praise. We give God glory. Yeah. Amen. So I believe our youth are leaving as well. Amen. Let's give them a hand clap as they are handing out. Amen. I think they're going to set up shop. Praise God. Talk about some. Come on, let's give them a better hand clap than that. Our teenagers, our youth. Can I tell you something? We need them to be trained in the Bible Amen. so that our church for the new season is not an unbiblical church. We need our children and our teenagers to have Bible teaching. They need the Word of God. They need it. They need it. How many of y'all grown folk need the word of God? I need it to live. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. First Kings chapter 20. Look at verses 26, 27, and 28 in the King James Version. Hallelujah. When you have it, say, I'm there, Pastor. If you're not there, say, hold up. If you're online, just say, wait a second, amen, glory to God. And it came to pass at the return of the year, the Benadad numbered the Syrians and went up to Apec to fight against Israel. And the children of Israel were numbered and were all present and went against them. And the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids. But the Syrians filled the country. And there came a man of God, spake unto the king of Israel, and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Therefore will I deliver all this great multitude into thine hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Let me say it again. Verse 28. And there came a man of God, and spake unto the king of Israel, and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is the God, the Lord is the God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Therefore, will I deliver all this great multitude into thy hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. You look at somebody and say, Neighbor, he's my God all the time. Come on, tell somebody and say, He's my God. All of the time. Scream at somebody else say, He's my God. All of the time. God, give God praise as you sit down. Hey, Amen. I don't know about you, but I've met some people who are where I'm from people. You know the where I'm from people that, that where they're from is always better than where they are. If it's
it's hot where you are, they say where I'm from, it's hot. If it's shooting where, they, where you are, they always say where, where I grew up, it's tougher. You always got some people telling them where they are, where they're from. Well, today we find in the text, beloved, we find some people of God who have battled against the king of Syria. And for context, for clarity, the king of Syria was an enemy of Israel. He wanted to destroy Israel because Israel kept winning victory after victory. The Bible says that the king of Syria had come against Israel multiple times. And on this occasion, he came against them twice. The first occasion, he came against them and he tried to destroy them. The Bible lets us know that the children of Israel were not big in number, but they had a big God. Even though we're in the gym, just turn me up just a little bit more, I can't hear myself. Because I want you to realize something, that even though you may not have everything you need, you serve a God who has everything. You serve a mighty good God. You serve a God that when only you had cheese, you found some bread somewhere, and you made yourself a grill cheese. Y'all ain't talking to me. You, you are God, you serve a God, and when you didn't have enough money to pay nobody, God made a miracle out of nothing. You serve a God that when they counted you out, God stepped in and reached down, even if he had to go way down, he, you serve a big God, scream at your name and say, I serve a big God. Not only is he a big God, but he's a great God. He's a God who never loses, he's a God who never fails, he may not come when you want him, but great God, he's always on time, because God does not operate in our time, he does not operate in chronos, chronos means there is a beginning and there is an end, and within chronos there are seasons where God does not work in chronos, he does not work in time, because God has no beginning, and God has no end, he is the beginning, y'all ain't talking, and he is the end, that's the type of God, you, you need to get an attitude to say, I serve a good God, yes, yes, have you ever thought about how good your God is, that he woke you up this morning and started you on your way, you serve a good God, you may do anything he deserves his goodness, but he's just been good to you, scream again, I serve a good God, well, Israel found out how good their God was, because their enemy was bigger than them. In other words, they had more bills than they had money. They had more sickness than they had healing. Everything was against them. And I don't know about you, but there's been situations where my back's been against the wall. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, it was nobody but the Lord that got me out. Matter of fact, even if I was crazy enough to try to take the credit, it would all point back to God. Because that's the type of God we serve. And here's how good God is. And even when you don't deserve it, He keeps on blessing. He keeps on blessing on you. And Israel should have lost the battle. Israel was, was destined to lose. Matter of fact, had we been looking at it, if they passed the eye test, it looked like enemies, uh, Israel's enemies were going to defeat them, but God showed up. Well, 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 long, long ago, the king of Syria said, well, I know why they're winning, because we're not fighting them on the right territory. If we take them out of their comfort zone, we can defeat them. It's kind of like when a wrong team plays uh, a home team, typically the home team should win. Unless you're the Chicago Bears, you all going to find a way to lose. Y'all ain't talking to me. Well, typically, when, when you have a, a guest team come in, that everything should be against them. The crowd should be against them. The weather should be against them. And, 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 the, and the visiting team should be at a disadvantage. But, but see, here's the problem with the believer that it doesn't matter where I am because he inhabits the praise. Yeah, he inhabits the praise in the sanctuary. He inhabits the praise in the gym. He inhabits the praise at a stoplight on State Street. He inhabits the praise in Belleville going up the hill. He, he inhabits my praise on Goose Hill. He inhabits my praise in Fairview Heights. He inhabits my praise no matter where I am because he's an omnipotent God. He's an omnipresent God. So, so Benadad, the king of Syria, said, well, I got to take them out of their comfort zone. If, if I remove them 
from the sanctuary, sure enough, New Bethel won't show up. Yet if I remove them from their habitation, surely they won't have new church. If I remove them from the stage, surely the praise team won't sing. If I remove the musicians from the stage, surely they won't play. If I remove pastor from the stage, surely he won't preach. But tell that devil, he's sadly mistaken. Because I was glad when they said on the media, let us know. Where is the house of God? The house of God is not just a building, but point to yourself and say, I am the house of God. Yeah, yeah. The Holy Ghost dwells on the inside of me. Love dwells on the inside of me. So you don't have to give me no building. I have church outside. You don't have to give me no microphone. I scream out loud. Because I can speak about the goodness of Jesus. Y'all ain't talking to me. And all that he's done. The team of Syria said, I gotta remove them. I gotta remove them from their comfort zone. And when I remove them, we'll see the real them. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I don't let them wear their suits, if I don't let them dress up, if I don't let them wear what they normally wear, surely I won't God won't get a good praise. But see, the devil misunderstood and miscalculated everything you know about God. See, what he don't know is that you ain't always had high heels and suits. He don't know, he don't remember that you ain't always had two nickels to rub together. See, he fails to realize that once was a time where I didn't have nothing to praise God. But now that God has been good, you think I'm going to sit down, point to your neighbor, and say, neighbor, I can't sit down. Because God's been too good to me. So whether I'm in the sanctuary or in the gym, I came to pray. They were in the hills. Yeah, that, that's why. See, 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 the devil always got an excuse of why you don't you keep coming. He got an excuse of why you ain't gave up. He got an excuse of why you ain't died yet. Yeah, yeah. He said, Well, the car wasn't going fast enough. That's why you survived the car accident. Yeah, yeah. The reason that you got healed is because of the chemotherapy. No, they don't know it's the chemo was called the whole time working behind the scenes. See, some of y'all can hear me preaching and you're getting excited because you can see me preaching. But I need somebody to get excited. And you know, yeah, right? Yeah, I need you to hear me. You know that God is talking. You can't see me preaching. But tell your neighbor, I don't think they hear me. I don't Like 
Elijah, it's not Elisha, but many scholars believe it is one of the prophets of the sons of the prophets. The Bible says that, that the many, you remember when God told Elijah, he said to him, Elijah said, Let's look at me, God, look at me. All of these other prophets have bowed their knee to Baal, and look here I am, God, and I have not bowed my knee. Any Sunday school students remember that? But, but, but God had to tell Elijah, like every now and then he got to tell you and I, you ain't the only one serving God. You, you, you do know you ain't the only one saved. You, you do know you ain't the only one tithing. You do know you ain't the only one. He said, Elijah, I got, I got thousands of prophets that ain't bowed their knee to Baal. You ain't the only one. You the only one out front. But there's some folks behind you. Yeah. So, so this man of God uh, had to be one of these men that came. And so as time went on, I'm almost done, I promise you. Time went on, time went on. And Syria said, okay, here it is. We're going to get them again because we got to see. Can I tell you all something? Your battles are seasonal. Yeah, yeah. So Satan tries to get you in a season. And I've been telling you this for the last four years that you got to track the seasons. See, we're going into December, and some of y'all are dealing with the same stuff 2021. That you were dealing with in 2020. And let me help you out. Thank God for that music. Let me help you out. That it ain't the pandemic's fault. You can't blame the pandemic for everything. Come on. That day is over. Yeah, COVID did, didn't keep you from going to work late all the time. That was you just being late. Uh, and the reason to let you slide is because they want to be considerate. But we get into 2022. And your boss going to say, uh, COVID's over. Now, you said Omarion birds, they might get with you, but they, it's over. It's over. Yeah, you know why? Because seasons. God is trying to get you out of a season of roller coasters where I'm really on fire for God, and then I'm not. And then I really want to work in ministry, and then I don't. God is tired of these seasons of roller coasters. This ain't six flags. This is a church. Come on now. Y'all miss your place to shout. Yeah, you want it to be six flags. You want it to be the screaming eagle. You want to have some highs and some real lows. But God is trying to make you consistent in him. And what he's saying, I'm the God of your bad seasons. And I'm the God of your good seasons. I'm just God. So this is what he said. He's a serious said, I got him, I got him. Okay, I'm going to wait a year. They're going to get real good. And then I'm going to bring something to them. Look at the text, people of God. Look at verse 23. And the servants of the king of Syria said unto him, Their gods are the gods of the hill. Look at verse 23, the gods of the hill. Therefore, they were stronger than we. Satan trying to figure out how you keep bouncing back. How you keep making it after all the stuff he done brought against you. They came against your kids. Come on. They came against your mind. They came. Are they still standing? He done took people out of your life. Come on. People close to you done passed the COVID. People done got COVID. God, he's trying to figure out how you still keeping your mind. But tell him, I serve a good God. Yeah, yeah. It's no goodness of my own, but it's by the grace of God. Y'all miss your, y'all got the wrong neighbor. Y'all your neighbor say, neighbor, ain't nobody but God. I don't know how I'm still standing. Life been beat me up. I don't know how I'm still standing, but I'm standing. Look at verse 23. Therefore, they were stronger than we. But let us, here it is, here's the plan. Satan is conjuring a plan in verse 23. But let us fight against them in the plan. Okay, we got to even the plan ground because, you know, when I was trying to go up and get them, I said, you ever had a teammate always make an excuse of why they mess up? And then fake an injury when they mess up? Oh, I hate those type of people. That, you know, oh, my leg, get your leg, it hurt, you just got crossed up. That's all that happened. Yeah, yeah, see, that's why Bears fans, we got a bunch of excuses. It's the quarterback. Then we got a new quarterback. We're still losing. Then it's the coach. We're still losing. We, when you lose, you always think of an excuse. But when you're winning, everything's good. Yeah. So the losers here, the king of Syria, he got all these excuses. Satan got an excuse. You remember when he told God about Job? He said, the reason that Job keeps winning is because you got a hedge of protection. A loser making an excuse. Sound like Satan, don't it? The reason that New Bethel keeps going, because you got an edge around them. Well, this is what God said. I'll take the heads down, and they still don't bless me. Yeah, I think things weary and weary. Yeah. Anybody going to still bless me? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. I don't know what that is, but it sounds like 
and sound like that. Hallelujah. I thought that was the keyboard. Hold that key ready for me to go. I'm almost there. Here it is. The Bible says that that's why we lost because we got to even the playing field. See, see, when you come against Satan on your own, you will always lose. Young people, hear me real carefully that, that, that what we're trying to teach the young people and teach you about spiritual development is that your religious quotes, your religious thoughts will not beat Satan up. That's right. Satan don't care that you say blessing, holy faith. He don't care that you say hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. He don't, he don't, what he responds to is the word of God. That, that the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. So in any battle that you are in, you need a, you need a tool to defeat your enemy. And Revelation 13 tells you that the enemy is a dragon. Well, when I grew up, there was a, a show called He-Man, Masters of the Universe. Yeah. And I, I know it's kind of demonic, but for the sake of this example, y'all just bear with me for a quick second. Because He-Man would bring out a sword, y'all ain't talking to me, and that sword would defeat his enemy. Well, here's the thing. If your enemy is a dragon, you don't have a gun, but you got a sword. And this sword can now defeat the dragon, which the Bible calls him a dragon. It can defeat him. So you take out that word, and you say, on Christ the Son and Rock, I stand all of the verses. He says, he says, this is why we lost. It's because we fought them on their turf. So this is what I got to do to every Christian. Let me remove them from church and let me see how they act. Yeah, because on your job, are you deacon so-and-so on your job? Are you sister so-and-so on your job? Are you reverend so-and-so on your job? Or are you somebody different when you leave this atmosphere? Because if you only get your strength when you're here, watch this, and you don't produce that strength when you're there, all you really strengthen. Mm. It's, it's, it's the people about where they're from. They're only tough where they're from. They're only big and bad where they're from. Here's what I tell people. I don't discriminate. I don't care where you're from. It's where you're at. Because where you're from ain't going to help you where you're at. Because where you're at, you got to realize that what I learned where I'm from got to be produced where I'm at. I don't know about you, but you might be at a place in your life that you feel like giving up. But where you're from is a place called glory. And God has anointed your body so wherever you are at, God's glory will shine forth. Don't you try to go back where you're from. Just produce where you are at. I might be in a sick place. I might be in a place to where I don't really think church is important. I don't really think I need God. But what I'm trying to tell everybody as I remind you this morning is that God is God and he's God all the time. And he's your God all the time. But God is not just a genie that you can rub a lamp and ask him to bless you. But God deserves worship. God deserves respect. God deserves adoration. That's why it, it, it just really, really makes me upset when people say, I just talk to God like anybody else. No, no, he your daddy. And I wouldn't talk to my mama any kind of way, even though I'm grown with kids, got my own 401k, I'm still not going to talk to her disrespectful. So there's nothing wrong with talking to God out of respect and saying, God, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Now, that on earth, hey, talk to God like you would talk to your parents. Don't be talking to him like he ain't anybody on the street. Hey, big guy. No, no, God deserves your respect. Look at your neighbor and say, you better respect God. Yeah, yeah, the Syrian did not respect. Y'all still here? They didn't respect God. This is what they said. They said, okay, he's the God of the hills. He can't be the God of the plain. And surely we shall be stronger than them. So here's the plan of Satan. Let me let me turn the tables and let me take them somewhere they're not used to. I don't know about you, but hearing the praise team at the beginning was a little bit like, man, I gotta get used to this because it's different than what I'm used to. Used to every Sunday, you're used to coming into a sanctuary and worshiping God, and that in itself can become a habit, and you don't expect God to do anything different because your habit hasn't been broken. But the moment God breaks your habit, watch this, that's when you gotta really trust him. That's when you really know if you're really a worshiper or you be playing around. 
That's when you really know that if you're really a preacher or you just be playing around. Why? Because it doesn't matter if I'm at the mall or if I'm on a plane. When I think about God and how good he's been, every now and then my hands just go up. And so my neighbors say, what's well, why your hands are all not speaking to think about good God goodness. And every now and then I'll be in the car and I'll be driving and I hear mom give me E flat and I'll just begin to say, oh Lord. And I begin to preach and I don't know why I'm preaching, but I'm just thinking about God. Can anybody say it don't no matter in the shower, at the kitchen table, in your cubicle, in the bathroom, you just begin to praise God. Anybody feel like praise See, this is about being born again because people that are not born again only understand God in church context. Yeah. That, that, that I got to get the preacher to pray for me. I got to get, uh, I got to call the pastor. And although that's good, our church is not set up like that to where you can just get to me. And so therefore, you got to do two things. You got to have your own walk with God. Yeah. But then you got to be able to trust somebody next to you. Yeah, yeah. Because I ain't the only person in this church getting prayers through. That's right. I think I got some witnesses, some other folk giving some prayers through. I'm not the only one full of the Holy Ghost. Come on. So when you understand God and you understand your relationship, it doesn't matter if you get to the pastor or not. He's still God. That's right. And the Syrian army did not understand this about God. They said, we're going to regulate God. Watch this. We're going to regulate him to a specific place. Watch this. And if God doesn't show up here, guess what's going to happen? Surely they're going to lose. Look at verse 24. And do this thing. Take the kings away, every man out of his place, and put captains in their rooms. And number thee an army, like the army that thou hast lost, horses for horses, chariot for chariot, and we will fight against them in the plain. And surely we shall be stronger than they and he hearkened unto the voice and did so. Let me, let me just go ahead and trepanize it for you. What happened was that the king of Syria said, not only is it going to be me, but I'm going to go get some help to fight against Israel. The Bible says he went and got 32 other nations to fight against Israel. Horse for horse. So every horse I got, my enemy, my, my help got a, got a horse as well to fight against my enemy. And they numbered them and said, surely, not only do we have the right location, but we got enough people to defeat this puny army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because not only am I bringing cancer on their family, but I'm going to bring COVID too. And then on top of COVID, I'm going to let them lose their child. And when they lose their child, I'm going to make somebody in their family go crazy. And start I'm going to bring everything I can against them at one time, and surely they're going to fall. See, some of y'all being like what I'm preaching about right now. Right. And it's like every time you turn, something is against you. And you try to figure out, what did I do to deserve all this? Well, let me tell you what you did. Matter of fact, you are a sinner saved by grace. So you done done something. But on top of that, you got an enemy that's fighting against you. And he wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. Armies against them, and not only that, we gonna call them out into a plane so they can see how vast we are. And when they see how many people are against them, surely they'll stop going to church. Okay, you tired it, then your transmission go out. When your transmission go out, then your carburetor fall out. Then your Cadillac converter go out. Then you ain't got no money for a down payment. Then, then your furnace gonna go out. And then the car is supposed to go out. Then your baby need a new pair of shoes. And I don't like they'll do. And you got all this. And then the devil tells you, that's because you was tithing. He tried to try to tell you that what you're doing is the reason why you got all these issues. But what he's failing to realize is that he's the reason why all this stuff is happening. You ever had somebody point out a flaw about you from a distance, but they never helped you get the flaw corrected? You can tell me I got a book, but you don't offer me no tissue. You tell everybody my breast need, but you ain't gave me no outpour. That's it. Come on. You talking about my marriage, but you ain't paid for me a trip to go out of town. Y'all ain't talking to me. 
Only got three classes because that's how we are. Yeah. I can point out your flaw, but I can't help you in your flaw. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so Syrians said, okay, they beat us. Like, that's how we say things. And let me say this online and to anybody in the, in the atmosphere. Anybody who jumps somebody else is soft to me. I don't like people who jump. If you get whooped, you just get whooped, you'll live to find and see another day. And anybody who gets whooped and then want to come back with a gun is even soft. You take an L, you take an L. But see, but see, the devil don't fight like that. When he takes an L, he got to go get all his cubs. I'm going to go get my cubs. I'm going to get my, my brother. And no, no, you took this L. You asked for this. You was big and bad. But now that you got the L, now you got to go get somebody. They're going to get all their cubs. They're going to get all their horses. They're going to get all their chariots. And here comes Israel. And Israel's saying, our enemy is coming against us. Our enemy is coming against us. And kind of like in Numbers 13, when they went over and saw the promised land and the Amalekites there, they got scared. And Caleb stealed the people. And here comes another man of God, and he steals them. And he says, this is what I heard the Assyrians say. That's why it pays to go to a church where you got a man of God. Yes, sir. They don't just talk the talk, but live the life that he preaching about. Why is that important? Because in verse 23 to 25, that's a conversation between the Syrians and their enemies. Well, how did the man of God hear that when he wasn't even there? Because God reveals things to the men of God to help you get through your trials in life. That's why you go to church every Sunday so you can know how to fight the demons on Monday. Yes, sir. He says to them, this is what I heard them say about God. Look at verse 28. Verse, yeah, verse 28. I'm sorry, verse 26. And it came to pass that they returned of the year. So it had been a year and they came back. And they said, okay, it took us a year to develop this plan against them. Okay, we got all our cousins. We ready for them now. And they ain't looking for us. We're going to get them when we get them. You know, my, I remember a friend of mine was fighting a guy. And the guy was whooping up on him. Whooping, I mean, destroying him. It was one-on-one -on -one fight. And I broke the fight. I said, man, you done done enough. You done done enough. It's over with. You won. Let's move on. Well, the guy thought we were trying to jump him at this time. I said, now listen, no, no, you beat him, but you now you're going overboard. You're just trying to destroy him. We can't let that happen. So we break the fight up. Well, the story got back around about six months later. Y'all jumped so much. So we thought he jumped it. Why? We trying to get him off on the way. Like, this is what happened. Syrians said, no, 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 no. We are coming to get you. Because we're tired of you beating us, and we got to bring everything we can at one time. That's why you got to encourage your neighbor. Keep pushing. Because it may look like everything's against you, but on the other side of this trial, I ain't talking, is a blessing that you ain't got room enough to receive. Right, if yeah. the Cadillac converter in your transmission going out in this car, God got something else for you. If, if your marriage is on the watch right now, God get ready to heal that, and before you know it, he's going to be using you in ministry. Do not be weary in well-doing for in due season. Been here. Look at verse 26. Then a dad numbered the Syrians and went up to Apac to fight against Israel. Satan got a child. He said, I'm going to get I'm gonna get everybody at New Bethlehem. I'm going to get you because I'm sick of y'all feeding folk. I'm sick of y'all praying for people. I'm sick of people getting baptized. I'm sick of marriages getting healed. I'm tired of all that stuff that y'all are doing. And so I'm going to come against you. And he'll bring people from the inside. You ain't talking. And people on the outside. But they can't fight against your God. You didn't show up here by coincidence. God ordered your steps. And that's why you are here this morning. Look at verse 27. And the children of Israel were numbered and were all present. Everybody that was going to fight was here. And they went out against them. But look, look, look at this now. And, and the children of Israel pitched before them. Look how the Bible describes them now. Look at verse 27. Like two little flocks of kids. I got a question for y'all. I don't know about y'all. Have you ever went into a battle and you look at your, your team, you look at the other team, you be like, man, it's going to be a long night. <laughs> you don't tell nobody, but you be thinking it. And then you try to get positive. You be like, well, we can do it, y'all. We can do it. It's going to be a long night. 
It's going to be a long night. It's going to be a long night because I know our point guard ain't like they point guard. I know our shoot not around. It's going to be a long night. But, but, but something on the inside makes Israel say, well, they coming against us. So we got to go out against them. And he says, before them, I told the get, but the Syrians, look at this, y'all, feel the country. So they were like two little, can I put a picture in it for you all? It's like, it's almost like trying to, trying to, trying to heal East St. Louis with just us. Like, like, like that's insurmountable without God. It, 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 we can't, there's, I don't, I don't, listen to me, I ain't trying to beat on nobody, but it just, it's, it's just going to take more than money, because even if you spend money on the city, there's still going to need to be some spiritual development. That's right. So it's about monetary, what you got monetary. Do we have enough Holy Ghost and enough anointing to do what God called us to do? Then he says, he says, they look like an uh, army, we look like two little flocks. Look at verse 28, and this is where I'm shouting, I'm done. And there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord. Okay, so, so God says, Because the Syrians have saved. Watch this. The Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Therefore will I deliver all this great multitude into thy hand, and ye shall know after this that I am God. I think you miss your place to shop because when I read it, I miss my place. This really ain't got nothing to do with Israel. This really ain't got nothing to do with New Bethel. They put their mouth on God. And God said, they don't care what they said about you. They put their mouth on me and they act like I'm the God that is in everywhere. They act like I'm the God of cancer. I'm not a God of, of I'm a God of everything. And God says, see, I take a fix to that because what they really say is that I can only beat them on a the hill, but bring them behind down to this valley. I'm going to whoop them in the valley. If they want to go to State Street, I'll whoop them on State Street. If they want to go to Baldwin Street, I'll whoop them in Baldwin Look at your name on one time and say, Name of he's still God. He's the God of COVID, he's the God of my healing, he's the God of my poverty, he's the God of my more than enough, he's the God when I'm sick, and he's the God when I'm healed, he's the God when I'm down, and he's the God when I'm up. Y'all got the wrong thing mixed 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 up. Oh, <laughs> 
children, God, as they go out uh, to school, to other events, God, that you would give them a courage, God, to fight in those battles and battles. Thank you, God, that you're giving them strength, God. Thank you that you're giving them an anointing to fight. Your word says that we should fight the good fight of faith, and so, God, we believe. We believe, God, your word gives us promises that how we train up our child, if we train up our child in the way that they should go, when they got old, they will not depart from it. So we're believing, God, that they are covered, God. We believe in God that they are the righteous, God, that they can't withstand trials and tribulations. That childhood trauma does not have to be their portion, but they can be healed, they can be saved at an early age, they can live victorious lives in you, God. We ask for a special prayer, special covering, God. And help us as adults, oh God. Help us to overcome childhood trauma, God. We thank you right now that you are a healer. We thank you right now that you are the healer. And so we receive the healing that you already made available to us. Your word says that you were bruised for our iniquity, beaten for our transgression. And so we thank you, God, for by your strife, we are here and here. And so we receive. We believe. Thank you, God, for being there for those who are sick and shaking right now, God. We ask that you would go and send a word, send a prophet, that they may believe. We thank you right now for those who are not able to come into the building, but God, the building, they are the building that you live in, Lord God. Comfort them. Comfort the lonely. Comfort those who are isolated right now, God. We thank you that salvation is the way, God. You are the way. And so we thank you right now for those who have received Jesus on today, God. We celebrate with them today, God. And it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Come on, let's bless God for the people. There are thousands of people all over the world who have received Jesus today. Thank you, God, for enlarging the kingdom. Amen. Father, we do thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. So at this time, we're uh, going to uh, our offering up uh, here. So uh, we have a few ways you can do that. Uh, first of all, you can, uh, I believe, speak with you today. So, uh, you can walk and give your offering and those who are uh, virtual, uh, you can send it to the church 3803 uh, Fairmont Avenue. Also, uh, you can uh, sow by, by sowing to uh, uh, the church's website, uh, www.newbethel.com. You can sow it that way, and also you can also sow through Cash App. That's dollar sign, New Bethel, in the church. And you can sow in that way as well. So let me uh, pray over our seats as we uh, begin to, to get our seats into the Lord. So let us go to the Lord. Father, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to come before the Lord of mercy and grace. Father, we thank you for your word on today. We thank you for your spirit in this place. Father, we ask that you touch the hearts of your people at this particular time, Lord, to give, to sow into this ministry, Lord. We give you praise, we give you honor and glory. We give you all the praise, Lord, for the you that give us the power to get well. Lord, we lay all of our, our seats down before you right now. In the name of Jesus, asking that you bless those who give, bless those 30, 60, and even 100 fold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you live by your strength. Start at the back, you go this way and make a circle. You go around. Next row. 
So it's going to be a lot of preaching and a lot of a lot of revivals in the month in the year 2022, uh, just so that we can get back into the habit of being in church, Amen, and worshiping. And that's the church I grew up in, Amen, where you just praise God all the time. And I want to guess to get back to that, Amen. Don't also don't forget about the marriage uh, uh, setting on Friday the 17th, Amen. Off my train of thought there for a second, the 17th, and then our church conference, and then on the 19th, there's going to be a special Sunday school. Amen. And we're going to have one last Sunday school on the 19th, I believe. Uh, Brother Rupert stated that that's going to be in the fellowship hall. One last Sunday school, I believe, at 9. We're also going to be giving some special prizes out uh, to our Sunday school teachers. Do y'all believe that we got one of the best Sunday schools in the St. Louis? Hallelujah. God has been blessed, man. Even, I mean, most teachers, even during the pandemic, got Zoom set up, got phone calls set up, and Sunday school kept going, kept growing. Amen. Now we got to get our children and our teens back. Amen. Sunday school back online. So we get them back tight. Amen. And get back to a flow. Glory to God. So remember all the saints of God that are sick and shut in. Remember those, amen, that are battling uh, these viruses. Amen. Praying for those that have received vaccinations and have it. Praying for everybody because he is God and he's God all the time. He's not just the God of the vaccinations and God even of the un 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 unvaccinated. So God is God over everybody. Amen. And we want to protect everybody. Amen. Were you blessed today? Were you blessed today? Amen. Hope that God gave you a word. You don't have to be in a certain place to get a deliverance or get anything. He's your God. Here's what I learned. Uh, a preacher told me this, and it works. When you can't think of anything else, here's what you say. Jesus fix it. Now look, Jesus fix it. And it works. Because he knows what it is. Yeah, you, 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 I mean, sometimes we don't know what to say. And it's better than you cussing, so just say Jesus. I'm trying to help somebody. Y'all going to get it before we leave here. Jesus, fix it. I didn't say take the wheel. I said, no, I said, Jesus, fix it. What's it? You know, you know. And sometimes you can't articulate it the right way. And instead of letting Satan play with your mind, Jesus fixes it. And he'll work it out. Now, that does not take the place of you studying your Bible. It gives the scriptures now. But until you get there, Jesus fixes it. And then nobody sees their ABC. You just know that R comes before S, right? T comes after S. You know that now. Amen. But when you were learning, you had to sing your ABCs. Amen. But now that we know some word, we can get the word. But when you don't have a word, just can use that in grace. Let's, let's try it. Jesus, Jesus. fix it. Amen. Not just when you get into trouble, don't even mind. when things are going good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, think about God even when you got that check. Yeah. That stimulus is coming in, and that child care credit, all that stuff. Think about God when you too. Like I'm getting that now. Y'all want to go on now, don't you? Okay. Think about the Lord. Right. On your best day, think about it. Amen. Amen. Let's get ready to leave. Amen. God is awesome. It's been a great day. Thank you. Amen. New Bethel for being here today. He's not a God of the sanctuary only, but he's a God of everywhere. Thank God for this campus. We give God praise. Amen. For everything that we do in this church, as we normally do from the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 23. Let me bless you, the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel. Say unto them, The Lord bless thee, and the Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Now may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit May it rest, rule, and abide, and be with you hence now and forevermore. I speak a blessing over your life that cannot be reversed, but it's a blessing that comes only from the Lord. But I say unto one, I say unto all, watch and pray until we meet again. Have a great week, New Bethel. Thank you for coming online. Have a great week. Be blessed. Hold on.